using the ligaments. Now regarding the cervix, the cervix is the lowermost part of the uterus, and this is the transition between the uterus and the vagina. And um, the uterus, as uh, during its development, it invaginated or it's kind of came inside the va the vagina. All right, so because it came in, if you guys look at the cervix here, because it came in, it had two parts. The part that is at, at the level of the vagina is basically what we call the vaginal part of the cervix. And above that, we have the uh, supravaginal part of the cervix. All right. So uh, as long as I have the fornices, it means this is the uh, vaginal part. Uh, as long as I'm above that, this is the supravaginal part. What about the fornices? It's basically think about it as you're trying to put a tube inside another tube. So because you were pushing inside, you got on your sides two recesses, or it's basically, it's not two. You have uh, anterior, posterior, and lateral ones, all right? Uh, these fornices, it's like a pocket. It's like um, a space between the two organs. So we call them fornices. We have two lateral fornices. One mean, one is fornix. Two are fornices. All right. Two are fornices. Uh, all right. Uh, the posterior one is deeper than the anterior one. And that makes the anterior vaginal wall shorter than the posterior vaginal wall. And this is the vaginal canal. And uh, back to uh, the fornices. Um, the posterior fornix is very important clinically, all right, because it's the deeper, uh, the deep, the deeper structure. It's important uh, physiologically because the the after the intercourse, um, the semen uh, coming into the vagina here, it uh, it gets stored in the posterior fornix uh, for a couple of hours, and then after the intercourse, they will start to swim to get into the urine cavity and then they try to uh, fertilize an egg. So it's very important that uh, this uh, individual, this female has a good deep posterior phonics for her fertility. And this is uh, maintained also by the angles of the uterus. Um, I don't know if we talked about the angles. Yeah, we're gonna talk about it now. And um, this is one thing. Another thing, if you guys look at the uh, this picture here, guys can see that the posterior fornix is very uh, closely related to the Douglas pouch. So if that patient is, or a female patient, is having collection of fluid uh, by pair vaginal uh, uh, examination, uh, sorry, uh, by uh, inserting um, injection, um, um, not injection, um, to try to aspire the uh, fluid, we do it by the posterior fornix. So we talked about the physiological importance and the clinical importance of the posterior fornix. Uh, this is the point of um, of entry to any uh, uh, needle to try to uh, aspirate any um, uh, collection of fluid in the Douglas pouch. And we talked about the sperms. Now we have two important angles that are made by the cervix with the organ uh, before and the organ after. The organ before is the uterus, the organ after is the vagina. So I have two angles. One is what we call the antiversion, and the other one is the antiflexion. Uh, the antiversion with V is the angle that you make with the vagina, all right? And this is 90 degrees. So if you guys look at the blue uh, line in the vagina, in the long axis of vagina, and the red line with the long axis of your cervix, it's going to give you 90 degrees, all right? And this is the normal antiversion angle. However, the antiflexion is the angle that your cervix makes with the uh, long axis of the uterus itself. It does not have V, so this is going to be with the uterus. And that angle is between the red line of the long axis of the cervix with the long axis of the uterus, and that is around one. 125 degrees uh, antiflexion angle. So again, the angle is made between the cervix and the uterus and the cervix and the vagina. If I have vagina, antiversion, 90 degrees. If I have uterus, all right, this is 125. 
and these angles are very important because they will help in support of uterus and prevent prolapse of the uterus out from the vagina because think about that if you have your uterus not having this good um, normal uh, angles with the vagina and the, the, the body of uterus think about a vertical uh, uterus as an organ that can be easily prolapsed through the vagina and it has many degrees it can easily and it can it can also reach all the way down uh, here it depends on the level so this is why it's important to maintain these angles it's already maintained by the ligaments we talked about them as the round ligament and of all the ligaments we already talked about them of their three sources and there is another uh, um, there is another way of support uh, which is in the vagina and we're going to talk about that as we proceed uh, which is here and um, if that is not maintained uh, due to weakness or laxity in any of these ligaments prolapse, prolapse can happen all right now talking about the vagina vagina is um, like we just mentioned it has um, a shorter uh, anterior wall which is around 7.5 centimeters and uh, a longer posterior wall which is around 9 centimeters um, uh, this is the copulatory organ it's a muscular membrane this passage which is very important for anything you would ever imagine it would be for the penis for intercourse it would be passage for the baby it would be passage for any uh, uh, pervaginal examination uh, it would be passage for uh, medications sometimes, all right? So it's basically a passage into uh, the, your uh, ureter, I mean, sorry, uterus, uh, sorry, um, uh, all right? And that is uh, supported uh, on its length. It has three sources of support, the vagina, uh, the, the superior one-third of the vagina is supported by the levator and eye muscles. Uh, we're going to talk about that into details uh, in the pelvis and uh, perineum uh, topic. And then uh, next to that, uh, it is supported by the urogenital diaphragm. And then below that, it is supported by the perineal body. We're going to talk about the details of that. But the only thing I, will, I can tell you here is uh, the support of the three-thirds of the vagina is based on where we are. You guys know that we have the urogenital diaphragm and that separates your pelvic cavity from the perineum so if i have support in the upper one third it's gonna be something in the pelvis which is the levator in eye if i have support in the middle third it's gonna be by the thing that separates the two cavities which is the urogenital diaphragm if i have a support down it's gonna be something in the perineum this is basically the perineal body that can help you to remember the support of the vagina on its length and this is the the pair vaginal examination it can be done in this um, musculomembranous passage uh, what you can bulbate in this kind of examination is anteriorly you have your bladder posteriorly you have your rectum on either sides you have and also here posteriorly um, um okay so laterally you have your uh, ureters remember when we talked about the urine artery and um, the ureters for any ureteric stones you can feel them on lateral sides uh, all right uh, you can also feel if there is um, um, uh, inflammation in the uh, uh, urine tubes uh, or uh, cysts um, around you and uh, also um, um, on either side, you can feel if there is a pelvic appendicitis, all right? So that's all be, uh, being felt by the pervaginal examination. All right, now we're going to move on to talk about the, um, the ovary, but I just realized that I didn't prepare for the uterine tube. Okay, so the uterine tube, it has um, uh, parts. Uh, we have the fembria which is at the start of it, which is around the ovary. And then we have the, um, uh, the infundibulum. It's kind of funnel shaped uh, structure. And then you have the ampulla, which is the most wide uh, part of the urine tube. And then you have your 
uh, isthmus, which is the, uh, the, the narrowest structure. And then you have the intramural part, which is the part that gets you into the uterus. So basically, the names of uh, these uh, parts are basically descriptive. They are very easy. So again, you have uh, your fembria, all right? They are finger-like uh, parts, uh, which are these ones here, uh, all right? These are the fembria that will help you to uh, move and uh, uh, create a current uh, a currency here uh, by in, in within the peritoneal fluid that will help the oocyte to come out of the ovary and it it suck it, it gets sucked up uh, into the urine tubes and then you have the infundibulum which is the next part here the, the infundibulum it's a funnel shaped or uh, a funnel shaped structure and then you have the ampulla which means widened area and which uh, which is where the uh, oocyte can be fertilized by a sperm and then you have the isthmus which and the name isthmus means it's a narrow space between two wide cavities so that's why this part is called the isthmus and this is the uh, ampulla and this is the infundibulum and here you have the fembria all right and the intramural means it's within the muscular wall of the uterus intra mural intra means within and mural means the muscle wall of the uterus all right now moving on uh, to talk about the ovaries uh, the ovaries are where we have our oocytes and um, uh, the ovaries are the uh, uh, very important uh, organs for reproduction uh, without them uh, there won't be any uh, um, fertilization or pregnancy all right the ovaries lie in the ovarian fossa and uh, the ovarian fossa is bounded by important structures um, uh, anteriorly there is the obliterated umbilical artery it comes out from the internal iliac and it goes to the anterior abdominal wall so that would be here the anterior um, uh, relation to the ovary and posteriorly you have the ureter all right and uh, laterally uh, the most important thing is the opturator can you guys see the opturator uh, artery and also nerve is there so this is a very important lateral relation to the ovary because if there is a diseased uh, ovary or problem with the ovary that can create pain in the medial thigh so because you guys know that if this is your legs here all right the obturator nerve is the nerve that supplies the medial aspects of your thigh right so uh, uh so if there is a problem with the ovary you would expect to see uh the pain uh referring to the uh, inner uh aspects of the thighs all right so what are the ligaments that support the ovary remember we talked about them talked about the suspensory ligament which is basically part of the broad ligament uh, laterally and that is uh, on the lateral sides of the ovary um, another name for that is the infundibular pelvic uh, ligament and this is important because the ovarian vessels they come from the abdomen uh, the ovarian artery comes from the aorta and it comes in by the suspensory ligament to reach the ovary and it also supplies the urine tubes and it also anastomose with the uterus on either sides and supply the uterus all right and then you have the ovarian ligament or or the proper ovarian or the proper uh, or also uh, or what's the third name um ovarian or proper ovarian ligament or ligament of ovary all right we talked about that the remnant of the gubernaculum we also have the mesovarium and this is uh, the part that I showed you guys uh, from the peritoneum. Uh, and you guys know where is it is it. All right, so back to the uh, artery. If you guys look at the ovarian, uh, it comes from the abdomen. So you basically have your aorta here. And then it bifurcates into two common iliacs. And then you get the internal and external iliacs. All right, from the aorta, because ovary is an abdominal organ, you get two gonadal or in female we call it ovarian so from the ovarian from the abdomen they reach the ovary 
through the suspensory ligament. So here is the suspensory ligament. You get your ovarian ligament inside and it reaches the ovary and it can also anastomose with the branches of the uterine artery and then they supply ovary, uterine tube and the uterus, all right? And then uh, the two common iliacs will give you internal iliac and external iliac. Now internal iliac is the artery of the pelvis. So because the uterus is a pelvic organ, so the uterine artery is a branch of the internal iliac. So this is the internal iliac that's gonna give me the uterine artery as a branch of it and that goes all the way to the uterus to either side remember that was going through the cardinal ligament all right so this was going through the cardinal ligament all right or the um the transverse cervical ligament and below that remember there were the ureter which is very important lateral relation to the cervix okay and then also from the internal iliac we have another artery that goes to the vagina which is the vaginal artery it's a branch also of the internal iliac it goes all the way to supply the vagina and it also anastomose with the uterine artery on the sides of the uterus all right now talking about the innervation of the uh, pelvic organs you guys need to know that we have something called the pelvic pain line and the, that pelvic lane lines um, it demarcates uh, between the parts of the pelvic organ that are supplied and the pain is referred to uh, our body through the sympathetic route and the, the other part which is below the pelvic pain line uh, through which the, the pain fibers are following the parasympathetic route. So if I have a pelvic pain line, if we can consider this as a pelvic lane pain line, all right, so this is what basically uh, above that pelvic pain line, the pain fibers are following, we're talking about here, the pain fibers, they're going to follow the sympathetic route. And if we are below that line, we are following the parasympathetic route. So below, all right, by parasympathetic. And you guys know that the innervation of the pelvic viscera is by the pelvic splenic nerves. S2 to S4, so um, it supplies actually all the pelvic organs, but here we're talking about only the pain fibers. So pain fibers are going to follow the pelvic splenic nerves, S2 to S4. This is important and um, um, because this is uh, the kind of uh, pain that goes to this parts of the body of the pelvis, which is the upper vagina cervix. And above that, um, it follows the sympathetic route, um, um, which is basically the fundus of uterus and um, through the infundibular in pelvic ligament and uterus sacral ligament. And this is the top uh, parts of the pelvis, uh, which is the fundus, uh, upper part of the rectum and the urinary bladder. They're going to follow the uh, hypogastric nerves, which are sympathetic in nature. And uh, another thing is the somatic kind of pain it goes through the pudendal nerve all right and that is uh, going to the lower part of the vagina lower anus and clitoris and what's important about this is that during um, uh, the anesthetic agent uh, they would want to give to the patient so that the patient does not get pain uh, during uh, delivery it's going to target this kind of uh, nerve uh, because this is the uh, the somatic nerve and this is the one that can cause pain and um, acute pain and tingling pain and um, very sharp pain however above that um, uh, the, uh, the the sensation is different it's kind of dull it's kind of um, um, so the pain is basically felt down here and this is what we're going to target if we were to block we're going to block S2 to S4 during um, uh, delivery. All right. And the uh, last thing we have is the lymphatic drainage. Um, uh, if you guys don't know the basics of the lymphatics, go ahead and watch the overview of lymphatic system of this channel to understand uh, the whole idea. Because here we're going to talk about the last step in that, which is basically how we drain the lymphatics from the uterus the uterine tubes and ovaries um, because here in the pelvic organ we're gonna follow 
uh, lymph nodes that are running around the arteries and because the artery is the internal iliac so i would expect to see lymph nodes uh, all around the uterus uh, so these lymph nodes are going to be the internal iliac because the branch is the urine branch and the vaginal are branches of internal iliac so from there you're going to drain into the lumbar lymph trunk and because any any lymphatic need to get into node and then a trunk and then to, to the thoracic duct or right lymphatic duct and then you drain eventually into the junction of the internal jugular vein and the subclavian if you guys don't know the general idea of that go ahead and watch that video uh, otherwise you need to know the names of uh, the nodes or trunk or duct uh, based on where you are if we're talking about the uh, reproductive organs it means we are following the internal iliac so uh, if we have for example a infection it will spread first into the internal iliac and from there it gets into the paraortic and then the lumbar lymph trunk and uh, it's exactly retrograde on how the artery was branching however for the ovary the ovary will go straight ahead all the way to the paraortic because remember that the ovary was an abdominal organ and the ovarian artery is a branch of the aorta. Can you guys see the ovarian artery as it comes from the either sides of the aorta? So the ovary will drain into the paraortic lymph nodes and then from there into the lumbar trunk and then cisterna chile and then thoracic duct and then to the left angle. Of the body so you just want to make sure you know the arterial supply at the source of the artery to know where the infection or the cancer cells would first spread into this is basically based on uh, from where you're getting the branch of the artery that supplies this organ so the ovarian is a branch of the aorta so it goes straight ahead all the way to the paraortic and the urine and vaginal are branches of internal iliac so it goes first to the internal iliac and from there it gets into the paraortic and then from there it goes all the way up as we just mentioned thanks guys for watching don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video